order of importance, we have some rare JDM parts that came in to go over today. We have some maintenance stuff to go over today, and then we have some safety stuff to do today. Before I can introduce you to the next project, I've got to get back on the other project. Fuel filter was disgusting. I don't think I've ever seen a fuel filter this bad. I don't even know what the inside looked like, but the outside covered in surface rust. That fuel filter, my guess is probably 10, 15, maybe even 20 something years old. It could be original. Um, so I had to get rid of that fuel filter, replaced it with a brand new OEM Subaru fuel filter. Then had to get rid of the line that they tapped into. They cut into it for, I don't know, a fuel pressure gauge or something. So I had to get rid of that T-fitting. That's just a, a new rubber hose. You're already halfway there when you're doing the fuel filter, so why as well throw a new hose on there. I'd like to go through and change all the fuel lines in this car because I just don't know how old they are. They seem okay, but some of them have some nicks and gouges in them, and that is a big safety concern for me. When I see fuel lines with nicks and plier marks on them, they might be leaking. They might be leaking soon. The battery wasn't even clamped down. Not even a piece of duct tape, rope, anything. Bungee cord, something holding the battery down? No, nada. So I had to go to Subaru, got the new tray, the J-bolts, the nuts, the top bracket. So at least we're able to bolt the battery down. But of course, one of the bolts snapped on the terminal when I was trying to tighten it. So I gotta get a new nut and bolt, so at least I can get the negative terminal on there. Underneath the battery tray, I was amazed. There was zero corrosion. I thought I was gonna pull that out and just see bubbles on bubbles and white, rusty colored, melted paint. But guess what? It's clean as a whistle. It makes me smile. I need one of those once in a while. But man, the more I dig, the more you look into a car that's 25 freaking years old, well, almost 25 years, it's still a lot of work. It needs almost every bit of piece of rubber. Plastic's all broken and cracked. We got gaskets leaking, we got, there's some problems. But first we gotta get to the safety stuff before I can even safely drive it on the road and see what else it needs. Well, we are missing the belt cover. I think there's two separate ones that go here. Not a super major safety concern, but if a belt does let go, I don't know what it would do. What's it gonna steam the hood, whatever. Um, just about every clamp in here has surface rust on it. Got surface rust here. Look at the pulleys. They don't look too pretty. They need work. There's a lot of aluminum corrosion on like the heads, the block, the intake manifold, just a lot of stuff, the throttle body. Um, I got a stock intake for this. May throw that back on. She just needs a lot of work. Water lines in the back need to be replaced. They're crumbling and there's one tapped in there. See that silver part? For, I don't know, water temp sensor. I'm guessing the gauge that was on here. Ooh, just, you know, tons of fun. I guess it's it's about the journey, you know. Do you want to get to the destination and, and, and live there and enjoy the destination? Or do you enjoy the journey? The heartache, the pain, the stress. I guess I like to torture myself. There is a lot of parts in the back of the truck. Let me show you. JDM aluminum hood. Front fenders. The entire front bumper, core support, radiator, condenser, overflow tank, headlights, side markers, grill, the whole enchilada.
in the back of the tundra. And I don't really know what I'm gonna do with them all, but came up online locally and I had to buy them, got a good deal. So now I got more parts to try to figure out where to store them. Parts are unloaded. Uh, let's take a closer look at what we got here. I like how it's all white. The grill doesn't have the pink badge, but I really don't care about that. It is white. Seems to be in really good shape. I think a little cleaning, polishing might do it some good. Teeny tiny little nick on the corner. The headlights are perfect. They, I don't know if they've been replaced. They do have the little Subaru logo down here. Actually, it spells Subaru. It's hard to see, but they are OEM. They must be, I'm mean, guessing JDM. I think the JDM ones point to the left, USDM point to the right. But if you remember on the white car, the two tabs right here that the grill mounts into are snapped on my headlights. So I might run these in the interim. Corner lights, pretty good, clear JDM ones. This is a little gummy and sticky around the edge. I think they just get like that over the years. Fog lights are in excellent condition as well. I mean, there's literally zero pitting, no scratches, no cracks, which is pretty rare. You can still get these new from Subaru. Well, as of a couple months ago when I bought some extras to have. Oh, looks like we got a little, a little chip here. Signals are there. Let's go around and look at the back. Someone just took a sawzall to it, chopped off the whole front end. I think the guy said that somebody else bought the swap. So they were just trying to part it out, some JDM importer. Look at that, Bucky LASIK, original Powell Pour Alta board. Anybody got one of those? Okay, so we have the fans, the radiator. Looks like a really clean core support. Could probably let somebody else use that if there's a front end collision. Car anywhere. Back of the headlights look good. Harness is still intact there. Oh, not on this side. Oh, look, we have a JDM or UKDM, basically everywhere in the world except US, in fender coolant overflow tank. These are great, I like them because you can't see them in the engine bay, they hide in the fender perfectly like that. I actually have a couple of them, but it looks like one of the tabs for the cap got cut off when someone was going nuts with the saw. Oh, what else do we have in here, anything? Lots of mounts and supports, uh, airbag, sensor, cut another airbag sensor cut over there i know it does have the condenser down in there as well jdm horn it's got to be worth something the real reason i got this front end was for the aluminum hood they're all over the place overseas pain in the butt to ship to the states really expensive it even has the scoop for the top mount intercooler that looks very um, turbo car specific because in the US it's just a flat plate because we don't get turbos. Has the vent trays on both sides. Looks pretty intact. That has seen a better day. The suppression, fire, noise, insulation. I ordered one several months ago from Subaru. They've been on back order, which means it'll probably just get canceled and no longer available. Other than that, got the top scoop, the vents on both sides. There's one little ding you can see there, which probably a paintless dent guy that does aluminum work can get that out or just the body shop. Pretty happy. I think I've been searching for aluminum hood for a very long time, a couple years. And anytime people get them, you know, they want like a thousand dollars or whatnot, at least for them, seven, eight hundred dollars pre COVID. So now they're probably well over a thousand. The fenders are already up in storage just to get them out of the way. A lot of this stuff I'm gonna probably sell, like I said, to recoup some of my expenses. The bumper I don't need, I already have another bumper in storage up there. JDM rear bumper, red, and I have a USDM one there. 
And these are interesting. You see the 99 to 2000 have all the mounting holes for the front lip. You see that? They have all those holes pre-drilled. The 98 and 99 in the US are kind of like this one where they don't have any holes drilled. So if you want to put a lip on there, you have to drill them yourself or you get an aftermarket one and just ram a couple of screws in there like most people do. But I kind of like the OEM fit and finish of the one with the screws. I was hoping this one was going to have the holes, but it doesn't. Still got a ton of stuff to sort out on the white Impreza RS and brakes is one of them. Now all of a sudden when I come to a stop, they seem fine, they're holding pressure, they're doing good, and then once in a while, the pedal goes to the floor and the thing doesn't stop. I mean, yeah, it's good if you like a thrill ride every time you're going to the store or going to work, but it's not very confidence inspiring. Just imagine driving down the road, brakes are good, brakes are good, brakes are not good, pedal goes to the floor and you feel like you're gonna die. So that's gonna have to be something we need to work on immediately, but I'm out of time, out of patience, and I'm out of money right now. So until next time, thanks for watching.